So once again, good morning, everyone, and welcome to our February Lunch and Learn from Ahola. We're going to make a start today, and today we're going to discuss some of the most commonly asked questions that both our sales professionals and our implementation and operations staff get asked when potential or new clients start working with us at Ahola for all of their human resources and payroll needs. To help us learn more about what those most common questions are, I've invited two guests along today to give us the answers to those questions. I have Russell Boone and Ken Taylor to help me. So first of all, Russ, would you like to go ahead and introduce yourself to the audience today? Thanks, Alec. I'm Russell Boone. I am the Time and Data Integration Supervisor here at Ahola. I've been with Ahola for about three years, but have almost 10 years in the payroll industry where I've worked in operations, implementation, time and attendance, many different areas. Thank you, Russ. And now, Ken, go ahead and introduce yourself, please. Hi, I'm Ken Taylor, and I've been with Ahola now for 26 years, uh, the first 18 to 20 of which uh, I spend in the payroll operations department. And over the last, well, seven, eight years, I've worked uh, in the implementation department uh, right now, specifically uh, geared toward the iTime, time and attendance product. All right. Thank you, Ken. And we appreciate you both coming along today and help us to uh, work through some of these questions. Um, for those of you who uh, may not know a lot about Ahola, we are a family-owned payroll and HR services provider headquartered in Brexville, Ohio, and have uh, 55 years of payroll tax and HR experience. And in that time, we have served over 10,000 small businesses nationwide. Uh, Ahola uh, we offer a full range of payroll and HR services and software. And today, our staff of payroll tax and human resource professionals serve thousands of businesses by helping them with their human capital management needs. So today, we're going to be looking at uh, the new client implementation process here at Ahola. We're going to be answering some of those commonly asked new client questions and giving you various resources uh, that are available to you as new clients to help you as you go through this process and continue your journey with us at Ahola. Before we get started on those questions, let's look at our actual implementation process and discuss what happens to your account after sign up for our service. So Russ, would you take us through the process of implementation, please? Absolutely. After you have uh, talked with your sales representative and gone over all of the different options and costing and uh, signed the paperwork and such, that comes over to our implementation team where it is all reviewed to, for accuracy to make sure everything is together. And then our lead implementation coordinator, Shelley Clark, reviews all the documents, approves the account, and then gets it assigned off into uh, a payroll specialist, uh, an implementation specialist to start to put together. <clears throat> larger, um, larger accounts often fall under our um, project manager, Gary, who then takes us through this workflow where we have a project kickoff. We get together internally to discuss the needs of the account and how best to put it together. We have regular weekly meetings with clients and all internal uh, team members to make sure everybody's on the same page and that all of the necessary uh, documents are in place. We start to put together the system in iSolved and then go into a period of testing where not only do we provide you reports to review for accuracy, such as your employee information and company information that we have, but we also do internal testing, parallel payrolls, and things like that to make sure everything is accurate and ready to go before we go live. Great. Thank you, Russ, um, for that overview of the implementation um, process. 
Now we're going to ask Russ and Ken to answer some of those questions. Um, so we're going to start with Ken. And the first question comes up with uh, Ken for you is what makes a whole different from other payroll and HR companies? Well, I like, we like to call this the whole difference. Uh, by that, we mean that, as you mentioned earlier, we're a third generation family run business and our customer care is what sets us apart. So whether it's at the sales, the implementation, or the post-implementation stage, you'll be forming lasting partnerships with our team members. And when you're dealing with uh, our team members, you're working with friends and neighbors. Uh, so really, it's this white glove service uh, and over 56 years of payroll experience that sets us uh, apart. As a ma- you know, That's our major differentiator, really, as indicated there. Uh, that sign you're seeing there is uh, in the driveway of our Brexville office, and uh, I drive by that sign every day, and it's, uh, mm-hmm. it's who we are. Uh, we're a family-run, family-owned, and family-run business. Thank you, Ken. That's a great overview of who we are here at Ahola. Um, so the next question is for Russ, and the question, Russ, is I have a question about my account. Can I get help? Absolutely. Like Ken just talked about, service is our differentiator. At Ohola, you have a dedicated implementation specialist while we are building your account and getting everything going. Um, And that person is happy to take care of whatever questions you have. If it falls outside of their wheelhouse, they will contact internal team members and we'll all come together to get you the appropriate answer. That doesn't end when your implementation process uh, is over. Uh, once once everything is running nice and smoothly, we move you over to our your dedicated client success partner in our operations department, who's assigned directly to you. You get direct contact information, direct phone number and email, uh, and, and we even facilitate a, a warm handoff where we introduce you to that person. And that person is happy to help you with anything you need at any time. Additionally, we also have an 800 number. That's 800-727-2849. Hitting option two will take you directly into our operations department, and you can speak to the next available uh, client success partner if yours happens to be unavailable at the time. Uh, We don't have ticketing systems uh, and and phone queues and and all that. You give us a call, you're going to talk to a person. Thank you for that, Russ. Um, Ken, next question. Can multiple people at my company attend a Hola's product training sessions? Absolutely, yes. The training sessions are virtual, they're free, and they're unlimited. Uh, our sessions are open to anyone or any, multiple contacts within your group or organization within your company. The registration links are sent by your implementation specialist. And if you need a training link or need additional contacts to be sent a training link, contact your uh, payroll specialist, your implementation specialist, and they'll be able to send those links to you. Uh, We do ask that you let us send an additional link to additional contacts uh, at your company. That way it allows our team to keep an accurate uh, account uh, for, for meetings and having, you know, make sure all are accounted for in other words. Thank you for that. Uh, Ken, uh, sorry, Russ, next question for you. Uh, topic, topic about employees. Do you have a mobile app that my employees can use? Absolutely. <clears throat> iSolved has released the iSolved People Cloud mobile app. It's available in both the Apple and Android app stores, providing a simple and seamless way to access all of their pay information, time, Uh, Time card and clocking, if that is uh, something that your organization uses, benefits, talent, and all sorts of other information directly from any device. A great resource, obviously, for our new uh, clients there as well. So moving on uh, to Ken again. Uh, Ken, uh, same topic about employees, but where can I see employees who have not set up their employee self-service account in the iSolve platform. Yeah, as a client uh, level user, as an admin level user, you, sh- you can have access to that information. Once you're within your iSolved uh, account, 
navigate on the left-hand side of your screen under Employee Administration Tools, then Employee Administration, and there's a screen called Self-Service Management, which uh, the slide is uh, showing you a, a clip of right now. This will list your employees, and you'll note a last login date. It's circled there in red toward the right-hand side of the page. As long as you see a last login date, that means your employee has indeed logged into the system and registered their account. Uh, we do like to point out, too, that, and it may be a little difficult uh, to read on a, on a smaller screen, but there are tabs within this page that will help you to resend emails. If someone has not registered, it will show you a list of those folks. It will allow you to uh, put check marks there and uh, click send to, to resend that email in case the employee either claimed they didn't receive the registration email or as a reminder, the registration email does, the link within their email is only good for 72 hours. So if the employee has not responded within 72 hours, uh, a new email will have to be sent. And once more, that resend email tab right there will be a great help to you in doing so. Great information, Ken. And uh, so um, going on to, and staying on the same theme there, Russ, how can uh, an employee or how can a business change an employee's email address or username for that ESS account if they're having trouble logging in? Yeah, absolutely. The employee's email address functions as their username for employee self-service. So when employee self-service is enabled, you will find that the email address field in the system is grayed out. It's not able to be uh, edited. So if you look under employee management, <clears throat> under employee maintenance, and then on the general screen, on the right-hand side, you will see the self-service information section with that grayed out email address. If you need to change that address, simply uncheck enable self-service access and then hit save. What that does is that disconnects the email address from the employee self-service. It removes it as their username, allowing you to change that field to any email address that you, know, you wish or the employee wishes. Just make sure you remember to recheck, enable self-service access, and hit save again when you're done, and that will automatically generate a new registration email to the employee using the new address, so they can then re-register their password and once again access the self-service portal. Thank you, Russ. Um, so now we're going to move on to some of the reporting questions that we have um, been asked previously. So, Ken, over to you. Uh, where can I quickly find my payroll reports in iSolved? Very good. When a client processes payroll, whether it's on a weekly or biweekly basis, semi-monthly, whatever the case is, when you hit that process button, your payroll reports for that pay are created. And within uh, just a minute or two, you can access them. Going once more to the left-hand side of your uh, administration account, you would look under reporting, and there's a page called payroll report archive. And the payroll report archive houses the reports that are typically run for a client with each payroll run. So it contains the basic 10 to 15 reports that you would normally want to use for quick reference uh, and the most popular reports. Among the top one being the payroll summary, which is a company summary of total dollars, total taxes, uh, banking information for the payroll, and the payroll register, which is, of course, your person-by-person -person accounting of uh, who's been paid, how much they've been paid, what their deductions are, all of that good stuff. And then again, there are other reports, direct deposit, retirement reports, but anything that's the basic uh, payroll run, you can find within the payroll report archive on a, uh, again, on a payroll by payroll basis. The most recent payroll you've run will be at the very top of the screen. But if you click further, you go on down and you can process, uh, look at previous payrolls, as well as the filter, you can pick a year. So if you've been with us multiple years, you can choose the filter near the top and choose a particular year. And once more, look at the various payrolls that have been run during that time. So it serves as both your payroll archive and basically a history uh, of your payroll uh, with us, with Ahola. Yes, and there are, as we know, there are lots of reports in there that can be run. Um, so, Russ, uh, on the same theme of reporting and, and the amount of reports, if a client needs a, spe a specific report not available in the payroll report archive, 
Where can I find this in iSolved? Absolutely. There are over 400 uh, pre-canned reports available inside of iSolved. The payroll report archive is just a selection of frequently used common payroll reports designed to truncate that list so you can quickly access what you need. If you look under reporting and then the client reports menu, you can access a very large list of available reports and that list can be daunting. Honestly, sometimes it's easiest just to start pulling reports and seeing what data is on them. The names are pretty descriptive, um, but sometimes there's a little bit of trial and error involved. At the top of the client report menu, the, uh, there's an option for report category, which can help you narrow down the reports you're looking for. For instance, if you're looking for a time card specific report, you can select the iTime reports category from that drop down to get a truncated list. Additionally, there's a search feature. And this is what I use the majority of the time when I'm looking for a report. You get in the habit of looking for a report and you remember the name of it, or at least a piece of the name of it, you can quickly enter that uh, information and search for the report to find what you're looking for. Thank you, Russ. And uh, the next question is for you, Ken. Uh, can those ISOLD reports be exported into Excel? Well, this is one of those trickier answers, Alec, in that there's a yes and no component to this. It depends on the report type. And you'll see when you look in under reporting and client reporting, uh, referring to that daunting list that Russ was mentioning a moment ago, uh, there's a report type column. And that'll show you different, well, obviously different report types. A date range report uh, is one that uh, most of the time can be run in Excel. And by date range, we mean it's a report that when a client chooses to run a date range report, it's going to ask them for a specific from date and to date. So the client or whoever the user is, is manually going in and going to say, I want to look at data from January 1st to January 31st. You're, so you're choosing a from date and a to date. Most of the date range reports within our iSolved system are available as, as an Excel export. It'll give you a little drop down and you can choose PDF Excel. Uh, now, when it comes to a payroll run report, those are usually confined to you're looking, you're running a report that's just, just for a specific payroll you ran, last Friday's uh, payroll run or a previous run from a month ago. A payroll run report is generally just going to be confined, well, just going to be confined to PDF. It doesn't give you an Excel option. Uh, there are also reports with ex export in the name. If you see the uh, word export in the uh, report name, you're in luck because that, by definition, will, will be an Excel output. So, yes, uh, Alec, to answer your question, uh, not every report is available in Excel, but a great number are, uh, as particularly when it comes to date range and one specifically listed as an export. Over to you, Russ, for the next one. And talking about payroll now. Um, so uh, where can I change an employee's rate of pay or any deduction amounts? Sure. This is a common theme, right? We want to see our employees grow and get stronger and be compensated fairly for that. So we do need to be changing pay rates and things like that throughout the course of running a business. <clears throat> Inside of your iSolve menu under employee management, under employee pay, and then salary, that is the screen in which you can change your employee's pay rate. One thing about this screen is this is one of the few places in iSolve that you actually have a history of an employee's pay rate. So we often suggest that while you can edit the current pay rate to change it, we suggest using the add new button to allow you to add a new line indicating the new pay rate, and that uh, continues to serve as your history trail of the employee pay changes throughout time. Additionally, under this same menu, there are a sections such as deductions, uh, which is a common place to have reoccurring payroll deductions. Um, now, if, now, if you are a benefits client and your uh, medical deductions run through our benefits module, that's a little bit different thing. Um, but generally, if there's a reoccurring deduction, you can access that to change it on the deductions menu. 
Okay, and now, uh, Ken, over to you, moving on to time and attendance. An employee's time off balance is incorrect. How do I change that? Thank you, Alec. This is one that we get an awful lot, and there's a helpful screen for doing just that. Uh, once more, if you're looking at your main options on the left-hand side of your screen, you want to go under Employee Management, and then Employee Benefits, accruals, and then there's the leave accrual screen. Another quick tip, anytime you're navigating within the uh, ISOF system, near the upper part of your screen, there's a search the menu uh, bar. Really recommend that for quick navigation. If you just know something of the title of the uh, page you're looking for, if you were just type like leave or accruals, you'll get this option come up. But it's the leave accrual page under employee management, under benefits, under accruals. And on the leave accrual page, You'll get your employees, you know, one by one, an employee listing, and the plans that are available in your particular company, whatever you have, PTO or vacation being two of the most common. On the right-hand side, when you're navigating on this page, unfortunately, you don't see this uh, right now on the screen, but on the right-hand side, if the, uh, there would be a little pencil icon, you would click that. That's your edit button. So you would choose PTO, vacation, whatever the plan is, click the edit button, and that would bring you to a neat little box that would have a update balance uh, box on it. It would show you what the current balance is. So let's say, for example, the employee has 32 hours of PTO, but their balance should be 40. You would click your pencil icon, and on the update balance box, you would put the number that you need the balance to be. So in this case, in our example, you put, you put 40 in the update balance box, click Save, and the next time payroll is processed, it's going to look at that new updated balance as the true balance for the employee. So again, in this case, the leave accrual screen will be your best friend in terms of being able to readily change uh, a time off balance. Thank you, Ken. And Russ, the last question is for you. It's regarding payroll again. So I added a new earning to my payroll. How can I see it on the time entry grid? Absolutely. And this is one of those things that your client success partner or implementation specialist is happy to help you with. Uh, so we, we can go ahead and take care of this for you. But if you're an independent type of person who likes to change things on your own, you're more than welcome to. Under the payroll processing menu, payroll entry setup, and then time entry templates. This is the menu that drives what different columns show on your uh, time entry grid. So here you can, using the check marks next to the earning name, add or remove uh, earnings as needed. And you can additionally choose whether you want to show an hours column or a dollars column, or in some cases, both. Uh, all, all those are, are optional. So definitely um, feel free to reach out to your dedicated uh, specialist for things like this the menus are available if you like to make those changes. All right, thank you very much, both of you, uh, both Russ and Ken for answering those questions. And just a reminder that we do have some great resources for you to use and help you navigate through the iSolved platform. Uh, there is the quick link section on your iSolved client landing page, and that has a lot of helpful links to things like videos, uh, all the webinars that we uh, we uh, host. Our, there's links to those up there as well. And of course, a link to our iSolved University, which again, has a lot of training videos that's going to cover a lot of the stuff that we've covered today for you to uh, look at and, and use as you go through the process uh, here at AHOLA. You can also visit our website at www.ahola.com for access to more uh, free compliance resources and over 300 blog articles, webinars, paycheck calculators, tax forms, and a lot more. Um, we also have a lot of webinars with great content coming up over the next year. So look for the webinar schedule email that we send out and go ahead and sign up to attend and learn more about the various products that we offer here at AHOLA. And if you want to view any of our past webinars um, or, or sign up for any of the ones coming up, 
you can go to info.ahola.com forward slash webinars and you can register and watch past recordings on that website. So for today, um, I want to thank both Russ and Ken for joining us today and answering those commonly asked questions that our new clients ask when they start with us here at Ahola. Thank you, gentlemen, for joining us. And to everybody else, I hope you found today to be informative and you've learned something. And we look forward to coming back to you again in March with another one of our Lunch and Learns. Uh, but until then, have a wonderful day, and we'll see, hopefully see you all in March. Thank you very much. Bye now. Take care. Thank you.